Hey guys, Messy Nessie here. Today we're gonna do a little arts and crafts. <laughs> I wanted to show you my finished piece of a purple geode that I did. I tried to do a puddle pour. I tilted it to try and make it an irregular shape. I finished it off with some broken glass and resin. And this is what I got. I have to do another layer of resin. You can see I didn't put enough down. But it looks really cool, and I wanted to do it in more like greens and blues to see how it goes. And I have a couple ideas about the puddling and the tilting to try and make it a slightly more irregular shape, like a geode. But just in case I didn't show you the finished one we're doing today, I did want to actually show you a finished piece. So there's that. And then we have an 11 by 14 canvas. And we're gonna do puddle pour. That is when you just pour the paint right into the center each time. And then I thought I would kinda wiggle and jiggle it here and there. And then after the paint's completely dry, the gems I use are these guys. I get, okay, I get these two from Michael's. They're in the flower section. And I found this really pretty blue. I have some white. And then, in the Dollar Tree, I found these lime green pebbles, and I thought those were really pretty. And then I remembered I had the blue glass at home. We have some paint to go with it. Um, yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so, this is a metallic white. It's a home mix of... You know what? I'm not 100% sure every single thing I put in there, but I do know it's a home mix. It's not one paint. We have some neon blue. Now I want to finish the center off with neon blue um, underneath those rocks because I thought that would be really pretty and eye-catching. I just made this one. It's a light green home mix thinking I might have actually made that one a little too thick. I wanted to offset the colors with a little bit of darker blue and darker green. This is Ultramarine by Liquitex Basics. And this is the Emerald Green by Artist Loft Flow Acrylics. Alrighty. Let's start tilting a little bit. Remember, we're going for a geode shape here, so we don't want it to be a perfect circle. This is, okay, so that darker green is a bit more runny than the others. Hmm. Do you want to have a little bit more of the darker green? Let's do this. Let's put it around the center. like that and this ultramarine as well it's a little thicker let's see what happens here but I had so much fun creating that first geode I wanted to give it a go again with slightly different colors Let's keep it rolling. Some neon blue. Let's put a little black in there. This is a metallic black. This one's a little bit of a home mix as well. It's mainly Artist Loft metallic black in the tube mixed with Floetrol. But I think I added one of those little tube deals, the, the little squeezy bottles from like folk art and stuff like that. I, um, because I'm creative, sometimes I'm given little leftovers of this and that from friends, from projects they've done at home and they don't want the 
leftover paint anymore and they figure instead of throwing it out they'll just pass it on to me and I don't mind if you have leftover paint from a project pass it on over I am good with that but I also don't necessarily do projects where I need just a little tiny bit of that color so I have these pre-mixed bottles of basically acrylic paint with low troll. So I'll just take those little bottles and pour that little tiny bit of paint in there and uh, keep it rolling for these like fluid art. And I also use them, I make those little tumblers as well. I'll use those to make painted tumblers. All right, we are definitely getting some irregularity. It was exactly what I wanted. Awesome. All righty. Let's see if we flow it, tilt it this way for a while. Let's see. It almost looks like a weird colored egg in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> alrighty. Those thinner paints are actually creating some cells. I don't exactly want on a geode painting, but I do need the center to not be so circular this time. Alrighty. I'm going to go this way for a bit. And this way for a bit. Okay, not a perfect circle, but still kind of round. It's basically what we need. Thin the paint out a bit more this way. Let's keep it rolling. All right, let's do a little circle of neon right here with a little circle of the light green. And then I'm do a little bit of this blue. This is the ultramarine, some of that emerald right behind it. It's nice and super flowy. Alrighty, now the middle. Hmm. Let's try and squeeze some of this in there. And some of this. Alright, let's keep her twisting and turning and rocking and rolling and let's see what we start getting now we might have to call this one abstract geode <laughs> isn't that fun when like something's not exactly happening how you want you just describe it differently and all of a sudden it is exactly what you wanted like um, this is how I wanted this to begin with, so it's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I think we all like doing that, though. And just use your language to try and make something go how you want it to begin with. Words are very powerful in life. Once they escape, you can never take them back, no matter how many times you try. You gotta use them very carefully. All right, we're getting some cool off shape in here now. All righty. Yes, 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 okay, okay. What can we do? Let's put a little extra white kind of right in here. A 
over here. And let's follow this a little bit as well. Oh yeah, that lightened it up a bunch. Let's throw a tad bit of this neon blue right here. Alrighty, let's start making this center a little bit differently. So how do we want the center? We want it where the neon blue is going to be in the middle. Okay, so we want neon blue in the middle. We want white around that and then green around that. All right. It's how I layer the rocks. I want the blue rocks in the middle, so we need to have the neon blue paint behind it. Then I want the white rocks around the blue rocks, or broken glass. I mean, honestly, I'm not 100% sure what it is. I know when it, it it's pokey, but it doesn't cut you. I use my little coupons on those, the Michaels coupons. Oh, those things save you a bundle over time. I actually don't live too, too far from a Michael's store, so stopping by every few days to grab, like, one art supply at 40% off, it, it, it doesn't uh, take too much time to do that for me. Okay. Alrighty. Let's make sure the edges are covered, and then we'll work in the middle a little bit more. Tilt and twirl, tilt and twirl. This one's definitely a little bit more abstract though. See, before I started recording to try and make a YouTube channel, I was working inside, watching, I would sit at the kitchen table and like watch TV with my boyfriend and make little paintings. But now, because I'm recording, and I live with other people, I go outside. That way you guys don't hear like people walking through the background or my dog whining at me because he wants a treat or something. And so I think what's happening is the normal mixture that I would use for my paintings, I think that the temperature outside as well as the humidity is affecting the fluidity of some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. It's a fun little experiment, trying to figure out what's gonna be the best route to go for some of these mixes. Because I've tried mixing paints exactly like some of the people that I admire on YouTube and it is not the same. I don't get the same outcome. Alrighty. All right, let's work on the middle now. So we've got green rocks on the outside. So we've got some green there already. And then we wanna do white. and blue in the middle of that. Okay. You know what, before we start tilting, let's add some of this, it's kind of like a light green with an olive hint to it. Let's add a little bit on that side of it. And try and make it this way a little bit. Now in my last one, the purple one I showed you guys in the beginning, I only have the rocks in one place, but this time I want to try and add a little bit of rock and the green rocks a couple other places. Ooh, we're getting some good movement over here. Let's try and expand it out this way a bit.
this one's gonna take forever to dry <laughs> yeah more than likely you're probably not gonna see the dried result of this in this video um, but I do have a Facebook group I made where I'm going to be sharing the dried results from my YouTube videos in so if you guys want to click the link below you can always join me there it's a fun happy place I ask for suggestions in there too sometimes when these paintings dry I may not be the biggest fan of them but before I decide to go and pour over it and I'll be like hey guys what do you think what should we do with this one I've gotten a great suggestion there was one I was not a particular fan of and then a friend of mine said well what if you flip it over and add this and add that and it was such an amazing suggestion I think I have to do it and it was one that I was honestly just gonna pour over everyone's creative you just got to give someone the opportunity to be creative is that a little bit more white right here thinking about how big some of the rocks are and how heavy-handed I am with the glue and I just need a little bit more room for the big geode in the middle gentle gentle now folks all right let's go this way a bit yeah I think this one's definitely going to be more of an abstract geode maybe have to make the paints just a little bit thinner to do the puddle pour right I don't know at the end of the day was this an actual puddle pour hmm interesting or was it a kinda puddle pour let's see all right let's look at what we got here definitely got a geode shape in the middle we got this fun little abstract situation happening on the edges. I like the color combination. Let's see. Do we want to add any strips of black in anywhere else? Yeah, I think we need a little bit right here. There's a ton over here, but I think just a couple strips right here would be nice. See, we've got a bunch of white, we've got that light green going here and there, we've got a nice big chunk of that neon blue there and there. Do we want to add any more dark blue anywhere? Let's see, right here I think would be a fun place to add it. Tilt it this way first. Get it going this way a little bit. And then we'll tilt it back the other way. So what do you guys think of this so far? Do you think there's an easier way? Do you think doing a, a tree ring pour and then tilting the canvas kind of awkwardly to create different shapes would be more beneficial. Do we like the way the paints moved around by putting them on just a little bit here and there? What do you guys think? Is this a project any of you guys are going to try and maybe create a different way of doing it? Maybe use thinner paint so they're not taking forever to roll on the canvas. I think this is going to be pretty awesome in the end. Alright guys. So this is our piece. I'm going to call it done for now. We're going to let this dry. It's going to take a while to dry. After it's done drying, I'll post a picture in my group. And then, after it's complete with all the gems and everything and the resin on top, 
I'll post another picture. And I'll definitely take your guys' advice and suggestions into consideration while we complete, the, complete this piece. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.